And just like that, it's time for our weekly roundup of all the things Lady Just Ain't Gonna Do this week. Number one, Kelly Price. Girl, what? This shit is really bizarre, actually. Last week, it was reported that R&B and gospel singer Kelly Price was officially categorized as a missing person. Now, word out on the street was that Price had contracted the Rona, and it was so bad, in fact, that Sis had to be hospitalized for three weeks in the ICU. But here's where the shit starts to get weird. Apparently, her kids get a call from the hospital that she's being discharged, which seems odd because at this point, she hasn't fully made a full recovery. And then she essentially vanishes into thin air for over a month. Apparently, the family started getting concerned and asked police to do a welfare check at Price's boyfriend slash husband's house. I don't know who he is. He refused them entry, apparently. Girl, what? So nobody knows where she is. Boyfriend, husband don't know. Her family don't know. And then in a weird turn of events, here she come talking about, I'm good, but I almost died of the Rona. Sissy. What the fuck is going on? What you talking about, sis? Then we come to find out she was like, yo, I don't really fuck with my family like that. So I don't know what they talking about that I'm missing. I just been in the cut recovering and almost died in the process. According to CNN, she got the Rona. We don't know if she's vaxxed. And then her husband got it. And then she got super sick. But other news outlets identify the dude as her boyfriend. Now, shit gets weird as fuck when she says she was never missing, that people were definitely seeing her while she was recovering, but they were prevented from saying so because of HIPAA laws, which are basically patient privacy laws. Now, y'all know this don't make no damn sense. Sis, you telling me no one said, hey, she's alive, she's not missing because they were respecting patient privacy? What the fuck? All of this to say... It's clear that something is going on here, but she don't want us to know what it is. And that's fine, sis, but keep it cute, because this 5G story just don't add up. But we're going to let it go for now and let you recover in peace. We're glad you're okay, and we're glad you're still with us. (laughs) Haiti updates. Where did all the migrants go and what's happening with them now? So last week, we reported that Haitian asylum seekers were being chased by Border Patrol officers on horses with whips. Now, of course, this caused an uproar because um, what's it looking like when men on horses with whips are chasing black people? Well, you guessed it, slavery. Well, over the last week, several prominent civil rights figures visited the bridge in Del Rio, Texas, where migrants were gathered, bringing more publicity to this predicament. Now, y'all, 14,000 Haitian migrants waded across the Rio Grande into this tiny border town. So where are they now? Well, 4,000 of them were deported back to Haiti, which is shameful and reprehensible. But thousands more have been allowed to stay in the U.S. while they await immigration hearings. But still, there is no proposed solution to what to do about immigration, how to both undo the damage of the previous administration, but also how to make sense of what also didn't make sense under the Obama administration. Massive deportations of migrants as a substitute for political battles that Democrats, surprise, aren't willing to have. Because why? Well, because they're still chasing old white voters rather than cultivating new voters with better politics. So here we are approaching midterm elections and both sides acting funny, but not moving no bills or a comprehensive approach to immigration because everyone is scared to use power in case they lose power. Does that make any fucking sense whatsoever to you? Me neither. Other things Lady ain't going to do this week, infrastructure negotiations. So make it make sense. Look, y'all, we have to give a more comprehensive update in the next roundup because it ain't looking good this week and they ain't even voted on the shit. Today, Congress did pass a bill to fund the government before it ran out of money. And this bill apparently is going to get us through to December But at the time of this roundup, Congress hasn't even voted on the $3.5 trillion infrastructure proposals. Now, listen, the holdouts, you know who they are. Drum roll. Kristen Sinema from Arizona and Joe Manchin from West Virginia. Now, this shit is literally so typical. Now Manchin is railing on about how he's not a liberal, but really, my feeling on this is that he's a plant. He's working too fucking hard to not just derail, but detract. And as you and I both know, That's Fed behavior. 
Now, I wonder who's paying them and how much they've contributed to their coffers. Something don't smell right here, and that's not conspiracy theory. We're going to come back to this next week. Other things lady just ain't going to do this week, Portia and Cynthia out at Real Housewives of Atlanta. Y'all, it's the end of an era, as it was announced this week that Portia Williams and Cynthia Bailey are leaving the Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise. Now, the big question remains, is this signaling the end of that franchise? I mean, Nini's gone, Sheree is apparently coming back, Kim is gone, but where is it really going? In any case, one of the best moments of this show was when Portia, granddaughter of the late civil rights icon Hosea Williams, wondered aloud at a stop on the Underground Railroad, which was like a church with a secret room beneath the floors, how the train fit through. Woo, Jesus, take the wheel. (laughs) All right, y'all, but here's what Lady wants more of this week. Number one, R. Kelly convicted of racketeering. Now, the best news of the week is that R. Kelly was convicted on eight counts of sex trafficking and one count of racketeering, and he faces 10 years to life in prison. Don't forget, that's just the charges in New York. He also faces child sex images and obstruction charges in Chicago and sex abuse charges in Minnesota and Illinois. Now, here's why this is on the lady loves list this week. It ain't about jail time for R. Kelly. It's about the fact that after decades of these people trying to tell their stories and be heard, be witnessed and be believed, that we are now listening. Now, as a survivor myself, the gaslighting is really the worst. For years, the voices of these survivors have been scrutinized, questioned, and frankly, diminished. Let me also take some time to just also say thank you to Dream Hampton, my friend and a guest of this podcast who brought us the brilliant and poignant Surviving R. Kelly docuseries that shifted this conversation in important ways and helped us see comprehensively how all of these pieces fit together, how this was a pattern and a practice that was supported, encouraged, and enabled by a wide range of individuals and institutions. And I, for one, hope that the next step here is an assessment of the systems and structures that allowed this to persist. Now, of course, there are some who would try and muddy up this whole thing by saying only black men get persecuted for sexual violence and assault and white people don't. And I am going to say to you very clearly that you can stand up for the ways that black men are railroaded without dying on this hill. This man was literally and is literally a predator. And any claims to the contrary just can't be taken seriously. Should we all have access to redemption? Absolutely. I truly do believe that nobody is the worst thing they've ever done, and I really mean that. However, there is no redemption without accountability and treatment. R. Kelly has had neither. So I don't want to move forward to redemption when you niggas won't even acknowledge he has a problem, much less hold him accountable for it. Anyway, this was an important week for the survivors of R. Kelly. Maybe for some it's about the punishment, but for me... It's about the acknowledgement that it happened and that it was wrong. He clearly has some serious problems and those problems need to be addressed. Now, the reality is not much of that is going to get addressed in jail. Jail is for punishment, not rehabilitation. R. Kelly is on timeout for the time being. May everyone find a little more peace and have a little more room for healing because of it. Other things Lady loves this week. The group chats when they work well. (laughs) So this week, Lady wants to give some appreciation to the ancient art form known as the group chat. (laughs) No, but seriously, my group chat was lit, lit, lit this week as I shared with my girlfriends that I am closing on a house and finally, finally mending this little broken heart of mine. This is good news, of course, because I told y'all this wasn't exactly the hot girl summer I expected. And the last time my girls saw me in person, I was depleted. I was bucked up. Now, when I tell you that chat lit up talking about helping me live my best single life, I cackled four days on end. A group chat, when it works well, can give you all the life you need to keep going and keep it cute. Sometimes group chats don't work, child, but mine were lit this week and Lady is grateful. Other things we love this week is that Britney Spears is officially free. So this week, a judge ordered the immediate removal of Britney Spears' dad from the conservatorship, marking the end of 13 years in which he has managed her finances and her life. We love to see it. 
Next hearing is on November 14th, and it's expected to eliminate the conservatorship altogether, which is really important. Now, I'm interested in checking out that Free Britney documentary because this whole shit sounds nuts. I mean, Pops apparently planted listening devices in her bedroom. Come on, man. Sis is like my age or older, child. Time to let go. Other things we love this week, Mercury Retrograde, all up in your business. So speaking of which, we are back with the final retrograde turn of Mercury this next couple weeks. And I don't know about y'all, dear listeners, but hey, I am grateful that's one of the last ones. Anyone else out there feeling like a strong urge to set boundaries and establish new patterns in your relationships? Well, if you are, it should come as no surprise to you that this retrograde is all about that work, honey. This retrograde is in Libra, our house of partnerships. And woo, boy, let's dive into this for a second. Now, I've been resetting boundaries that needed it, setting and holding new boundaries, and working on me. And I will tell you, child, sometimes people don't like it when you set boundaries with them. They deflect, they try and diffuse, and otherwise gaslight you into thinking that your boundaries are inappropriate. But when that happens, this is when you know that the boundaries actually needed. For me, though, it's not about the other person's behavior. I mean, yes, that sucks and it's annoying and all of that. But this time around, it's about holding the boundaries themselves. I mean, I feel like we don't talk enough about how hard it is to hold boundaries with people you love. It can be downright devastating, to be honest. I love someone right now who I'm having to set boundaries with, and it's deeply painful. But on the other side of that is also my dignity. I mean, you got to treat me right if we're going to be in relationship. And like Prentice said, boundaries are the distance at which I can love you and love me at the same time. And I'm with that shit. (laughs) Yes. 